carbon convicts. You carbon convicts. You carbon convict crickets. You carbon convict cricket quitters. Before you even got started. Republican, Matt. Republic, madam, if you could keep it. <laughs> we were supposed to keep something, folks. They humanized your whole world right in front of your eyes. They then blamed you for being human. And you stopped all being men and women. The world has become a mercurial macho. Remember, Mercury was the communication, was the system of speedy data, information. It was also the thing of the devil. As the earth was given over, if we start to understand how this whole thing has been wired and how we've been played for what we thought was good in us reflecting out in the world, it doesn't. You see this inverted life world going and coming right out before our eyes and no one really wants to respond to it. And I'm just amazed at that. The inversion of the lack of naturalness under under the the promise that nature would be protected is fascinating to watch. And no one really responds at all. This inversion where women want to clamor to be legalized as men and they were legalized as men and don't realize they're not actually women and didn't stand up for themselves, notwithstanding all the past history where they're also claiming they want equal rights. They got it. They didn't realize the men were made into legalized entities. And so you're all the same entity. You're not even you. And none stepped up to defend yourselves. It's a global invasion. It's so big, it's almost not able to be seen. And we hear now, coming out of the United States government, this pre-hatchling mental institution escapees of coming onto the world to give us their nonsense. And we keep buying into it. None of us will lift a finger to defend ourselves. We just complain, we argue, we satisfy our egos and social chats. We apparently believe becoming a social media keyboard warrior is all it's supposed to ever be. And you never take those same keys and you make something in writing sent somewhere to become effective and functional. And then amazing to me is we seem to be content in that doing nothingness. Wisdom says keep the republic to save ourselves. <laughs> what a joke. What have we kept? What a pathetic joke we've become. And then I hear, hear the echoes of words or things I read on the, on the keyboard and the monitors, uh, people talking, but, but I don't want to save the republic. I don't believe in government. So what? You've done nothing to advance any of your failed utopia either. And now, as I told you last week, you're now a carbon criminal convict, and because you haven't answered, you're a cricket too. And you're going to see very carefully as uh, this thing rolls out, and all that uh, complaining you've been doing in social networks, not doing the fuck effective thing, you're going to, your electricity is going to start coming up on that keyboard. It's going to probably quadruple. You're going to tax your life because you are a criminal. You're presumptively a criminal, if not convicted without appeal, and now you will suffer the punitive damages of your silence. You keep the republic. You know, so I don't believe in it. Well, some, but something's coming on to you, and it certainly is not that republic that we ought to have kept. We, we never reached the intention of what, what the organic nature of the establishment of the United States of America was about. It got subverted in so many ways, and no one actually stood up. Not even all the ones with the guns, the Second Amendment. But now they're so blind they can't see. So you don't want to agree on the existing establishment we never fulfilled and you never embraced and you never protected, yet you want to advance another failed utopia because you have no understanding of the historic mind of man and how failed man, man is. And we've been told about how failed it is. No, but now now we're going to see how this uh, uh, your conviction as a carbon criminal and cricket too 
is going to start playing out. And it plays out in so many ways. It's, it's really an astonishment to me that we allow it. You're going to pay and slowly die a social carbon credit debt for which you will be severely punished. And they say that last week I said that over and over and over. It just happens to you because you never stopped it. To, you know, the way these carbon crickets and all the carbon cricket food is so re- nutritious and uh, the people, the way the government, that, that's a, the minority that's in the in the world that's planning all this, uh, you're going to get the list. Of, they're running it short on the soy, at the Soylent factory and you uh, are going to need to help sacrifice yourself. You think that's all just a big joke? You will be sacrificed. You'll be told to turn yourself in. You, if you don't, you'll be hunted down. What you hear last week in New York? We're going to hunt you down and punish you. And what, what? For the good of Gaia. And it's really not that. That's a false front as well. These are a bunch of lunatic psychopaths in the world. And this whole thing is, uh, when we hear the word decentralized, people don't understand what that's actually doing. You're already decentralized in rule. You're already decentralized. What's not decentralized is the common application of what's going on, which is right everywhere you live. And so this whole world is being ruled by a decentralized monocracy. A minority ruling everybody. Which is completely shameful at at some level. That a bunch of people allowed a minority, a crazy minority, to to get over the day because you you want to be what? This will be BTW RLM 310. You think I'd open up this broadcast right now without the crickets? Are you kidding me? You're not listening. You're not listening at all. Crickets are going to be permanent from what I can see. And I am just dismayed. I'm a big diss right now. Dismayed that we allow it. We're allowing this on us. And I brought you up last week and the week before and I told you something's coming down. Actually, I started talking about it last month when it was a surprise to us and given to us in the news. It was running stealthily, and it's been running for about 10 years. Along with this cap-and-trade, green jobs, a gang green, whatever the heck talked about last week, the new green disaster, this is all the global order on you, and it's being imposed, and it has a method that it gets imposed, and I said there's a way to contra, con, uh, um, counter that. And none of you have stepped, stepped up, none of you. Again, another week went through. Didn't see a peep about anybody being doing anything. And yet I see the complaints. I see the complaints. And it's not like a, I'm not here to explain how to at least get focused in on maybe making some sense of it. Even in the, even, even though it's nonsense coming at us, we can make sense of the nonsense and it can be defeated. And, r- and right now I, I keep, I'm having a real difficult time. What do I do? What's going on? What do I tell people? They're not listening. They're not acting. Yeah, I keep going to the point. This is done. I'm, uh, this is this is we're done. We're a done nation. I'm looking at a, bu- a bunch of crickets. I don't know what else to call you without getting real. Maybe like I said in one of my 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 uh, my twitters, uh, the stuff that I'm watching right now that come out of the government that is the same thing I've been telling you has been coming down that now comes and slaps you right in the gums and you don't respond to. It's enough to make me start cussing, folks. And yet I don't want to do. That. Because I know I've gone through that whole thing and I realize that cussing is just another way to remove your responsibility and you start to start, start sounding really stupid and you think it sounds smart because it's macho. Oh, it gets the words out speedily, but it doesn't really communicate a darn thing and it doesn't get you anywhere and it puts you in a mindset that's ineffectual. So let me just go through what's going on. We had the mining district meeting here this last Friday. And we're having to stare this one right between the eyes. It's looking right at it. Slop, slapped all the raw materials producers in the chops. Slaps you right in the chops. And I don't know how you folks exist without kind of considering this. If you don't understand what happened when your raw materials producers are slapped in the chops or hogtied or, or denied or at all in, interfered with, you're not paying attention. 
I don't care what you call the government that you run. If you don't have your primary raw materials production and the people that will do it and the knowledge that it takes and the generational wisdom that you need to have to maintain that that uh, capacity for, for your society, even though you're not doing it, you're taking benefit of it. And if you can't see the importance when that gets attacked, I don't even know if we have a mind in us anymore to be able to stop anything. We're so dumb, not dumbed down, because we have the responsibility to crawl out of our dumbness. We're so dumb, period, and then res lack of response on top of it, that we're just incapable. And I, in a way, it's almost, I look at some of that and say, well, maybe maybe then they're, they're actually doing everybody a favor. Maybe they're doing you all a favor. You're not doing me a favor, because I, I, I think I see this. I think I see it really clearly. And I know I see that because I have, if you can call it, say, skin in the game. I've actually got stuff I'm doing on the land that's being interfered with. And interestingly, with this new build that went through, the public land bill that I was telling you about, this is all part of the sustainable development, and I'm going to show you how. And it's attack. I told you sustainable development is an economic attack on your nation. I'm going to show you how. It's right in the bill. That The mining claim that that we have, even though they claim that this bill was to save salmon and for water for fish, and we've got a problem there, I can go through all this, but I may or may not, because if you're not interested, it doesn't matter, to show you how easy it is and how extensive the, 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 the plunder has been here. I call this a plunder, this bill. That they did not take a creek that our claim sits on and make it a wild and scenic. But where we had put a comment in that said that the wild and scenic, or the, excuse me, the sal salmon and habitat ended down, way downstream where there was a giant rock dam, the tributary right below that rock dam was put into this wild, wild and scenic withdrawal of all mineral access. So when I tell you that we can make comments, now do I, have, do I have proof that what we said stopped it? Well, no, I don't. But why'd they stop when they're coming in and taking it all? And there's another thing. Is, well, our claim is a, is a pretty interesting claim anyway. They, they, I think, and this just shows you there's an intelligence behind this attack. It's an attack on you. It's an attack on your nation and your ability to get stuff and get it reasonably priced and get it in a way that's wealth instead of debt. They're, they're attacking all of this. It's a sabotage. It's a treason. It's a war being made upon you, and you sit there like there's no war at all. In fact, the older days, I think, were better. When you saw these army coming at you, you either defended yourself or you died, or you became a prisoner. It was pretty obvious and simple. They've learned how to get rid of all that violence. It's actually more violent, but in a different way. But they didn't come up and they didn't engage our claim because I think they understand they're pretty sharp about how they do this. They don't want to give us the standing to show how all that they're doing is a crime. And I'm actually only part, almost partly disappointed they didn't make our creek, the extension of our creek, within this bill, because I would give, give me standing to go attack it. Now I'm kind of standing there, it's right outside of our door, if you will. It's in an area right, side out, right outside of a wilderness area they wanted to expand. They didn't go and do that, did they? And so I've got some evidence, I think, that when you engage this, if we were to engage this, we could have stopped it. But as I told you, the Senate, a Republican... Uh, the Republican Party-controlled uh, Senate uh, actually did the, the initial dagger stab across this country in its public lands in advancing and passing a land bill. Uh, we found out as it came upon us, uh, and I said at the last miners' meeting, uh, min mining district meeting, I said this thing is, if it's being agreed to by the, by the Republicans, this is not going to take long. It's going to go right through the House, and the President's going to sign it. Last week I asked you all to send your your letters. I didn't see any email saying I sent a letter. Thanks for letting us know. Uh, you didn't even do it if you were my friend, folks. I mean, come on. You know, help me out. No. But anyway, so the district finally was able uh, to put together a response because we it takes a while to do the research to be right. Because you can't make an argument wrong. You know, I did that so that the... Uh, at least to make sure that uh, even though it was coming too fast, I said we need to at least put something in. We need to create our standing to be able to... To, do, to try and stop it at, at some future time, given we have an opportunity. And so the district submitted its, its letter. It happened to come too late. We were told that one of the bills that was supposed to be coming underneath this firefighting uh, condition to give everybody the belief that this, this bill was to help aid the fires. It's all a lie, folks. Don't, don't, uh, when I'm saying this stuff, I'm not agreeing with it. 
at all of it. It's just a big plunder. Uh, this is just a small area that was done. One of the congressmen is supposed to be Republican, got his little two cents in, and then they actually withdrew a study area uh, and gave a buffer area for uh, people that have private property so they could properly fight the fire in that little area. That's all that that was. There was no actual addressment of the fire problem. And I'm going to show you why that's important as I've been talking all this time. That all of you sit there and be quiet on things that you think are not are happening elsewhere and not available, not going to hurt you, that are absolutely destructive of your whole way of life, whether you understand that or not. You also have to may not be aware, even though I've been telling you, all these things that are national become they need local, they need local support. In other words, they continue to ask for the consensus support. In other words, it's not actually law when they need to have your consensus support, as I'm getting at here. But they're going to come after you and your property taxes. All you people got property. They're going to come after those dwindling businesses because there's less and less share as they destroy, and I'll say the term here, we'll get to a little bit later, your primary economy. I'm going to say it again, your primary economy. And I want you to consider this, your primary economy is destroyed. How do you get other economy from that when you have a society that's established from primary economy? should be your first clue that they just stuck, stuck a dagger in the heart of this country with this public lands bill that took a decade to put together. And they did it by what, folks? Just what I've been telling you. They didn't do it by law. They didn't do it by looking at their fiduciary duty. In fact, they won't do it anything to do with the law. It's there. It's been violated, and this process violates it. They did it by consensus. And this cancer metastasizes. Not only does it now put this bill in under underneath this public land bill for managing the, 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 the public lands and withdrawing minerals and water and uh, trees and setbacks and repairing areas that have no standing in law. They, were, they did all this, and they're going to interfere with your raw materials. And they want to take this as the first step for an ongoing building. It says it right here in the, in the report. New, new public lands, promise, lands law promises protections for Oregon natural landmarks. Folks, right here, there's an obligation by Congress to the states to allow production. Did you hear in the title that they were going to protect production? No, you're going to find that absent in all of this. They're going to make lip service to it by hiding it. Uh, they, you think that they're hiding it under the term natural resource use, but that's not what they mean when they talk about natural resource use. They're going to now protect natural landmarks, the landscape, not the watershed. And not the productive capacity, because this is a conservation bill. Conservation is non-use to these people. Non-use because they're wilding the land to protect the environment, the earth, because they're the stewards of the earth now. Talk about a dual citizen here. Maybe focused on the wrong ones as well. But at any rate, here we go. We had a public lands law promises protection of Oregon natural, uh, na natural landmarks from the... Uh, from the mouth of the the evil do, one of the evil doers, cons, this is to cons, is conserving our state's iconic devil's staircase, adding hundreds of miles of wild and scenic rivers, increasing wild fire protections, and more totals up and more totals up to a big win for Oregon's recreational economy," said the leading proponent of this destruction and plunder, Senator Ron Wyden. And he said that after the White House signed that bill. And here's my problem with this. Trump did that, folks. For all you want to support Trump, Trump did this. Someone said to me, well, he didn't. He, there were going to be a majority vote to be able to pass it on the second pass through the Senate if he did, if he killed it and the House. That was his to do, and we're going to find out he has that to do. He didn't step up for everyone he's ever talked about in raw material, the miners, the ranchers, the farmer, nobody. And yet he has the power to do so. And we, I have a, a report that he has. His first time he did it had nothing to do with helping anybody but destroying another people. In other words, he's on, now, Trump is now on record that he'd prefer continuing genocide against the people than to stop the genocide or to do things that he actually should do that would actually be helpful in the world. In other words, think about this. He's willing to commit genocide against the people, and I'm going to point out, you know, I'm going to extend that to say, so he's willing to destroy you. 
Sweeping legislation package signed into law by President Trump today includes key environmental provisions for, the, for which you know, US, uh, Oregon's U.S. senators have long been pushing, but we've been fighting for years. This is a, also a recreational economy, folks. Where does that come up in the list of needs? This is the largest pu public lands package passed by Congress in a decade. And to, and I look forward, this, this criminal, this treasonous criminal senator, I look forward to building on its gains for, for every corner of our state. Now, he's taking claim to a state, it's not the people's state, and he wants to take this, this plunder and extend it to the places now he wants to build upon. This is capacity building that we talk about underneath this process that I keep telling you is destroying this nation. The thing I told you last week, your Second Amendment can't stop. The law creates newly protected Devil's Staircase Wilderness consisting of 30,000 acres of land within the Oregon Coast Range, tucked between the Smith River, the Umpqua Rivers, and the name for an iconic waterfall in the region. So, conservation, we're not going to use it. You get to go look at it. And then you're going to get to go look at it when we tell you so. They're promoting this as an access package as well, but it doesn't do anything. But here's what they attacked here, folks. In particular, it's what we've been trying to stop. And the thing, the method that we have was able to stop it, but it's not stopped at the point of legislation. I told you about coordination being a requirement, but it's not. It has an Achilles heel. And that's where they purport to make legislation that counters, uh, takes a what away what the agencies get to do. And they put this into a land management package uh, as as dictated from Congress. Now, Congress has the right to do that, but they don't have the right to do it in violation of the obligations that they already have to other things. And that would be your states, and that would be to the land grants that they have, and that would be to protect those trusts that were established through those land grants, the thing I talk about all the time. If you don't understand this stuff, you're missing the point, you're missing the thing about property, you're missing the constraints on the government, and you're watching these people with that, with your, while you would look within that ignorance, and with that ignorance, you're watching them take down your nation. Now here's what, why we know this is not going to be a, a, a promoter of production. It says it in the next paragraph of this report, much of the changes procured for Oregon are located directly in southern Oregon, however. I find that fascinating because that's the, the locus of the mining district. So this is almost like a message to those of us that have been doing this. See what you don't, you're powerless. Now that's not necessarily the case, but that's what the message is here, folks. It's local, localized in the most, one of the, one of the, there's only about, there's two very uh, rich uh, mineralized areas in Oregon and then they just took out one of them. It happens to be where the district has its home office, if you will. And something that we made comments to. And they stopped every one of them while there were wildlife study areas, uh, wild uh, wild uh, wilderness study areas, or they were for to withdraw uh, for wild scenic areas. We stopped all that in coordination by writing letters and comments. This didn't, let, there was stealth on this one. They didn't want anybody to come in. It took them 10 years to work up all the lists. Much of the changes procured for Oregon are located in southern Oregon. So what are they, why are they focusing here? A number of Oregon lawmakers have long fought to obtain permanent protection for the Chetco River from mining and my mineral extraction interests, something now galvanized with the passage of the public lands package. I find that an ironic statement since galvanized requires zinc, and they can't get that zinc unless they get the minerals in the ground, they just withdrew. But they focus strictly on taking out mining. Now, there's not, and they then go on to talk about the Feeding, uh, breeding grounds for salmon and steelhead, there's not one scientific evidence that mining stops that. In fact, there's many scientific evidence that mining helps that, and it helps the breeding of fish, and also that there's no real actual harm at all. In fact, state law says that diminution of quality is not a factor. In other words, a miner in the water doesn't do any, it's all just work and dirt, isn't it? Now, we've heard the big nasty stories about the mine dumps that, that flow out. The EPA screwed up a mine, did it wrong, and they got their big floods. You hear about all that, so you think this is what I'm talking about. No, that's after the rules have been wrong, done wrong. That's actually after the interference with the agencies, before the fact to concentrate this nonsense with the we never did that before. I've got to get into that stuff. We're talking about withdrawing mineral lands. That's production, folks. 
This is all about a recreation economy. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know how many people they can do in recreation, especially, especially in the summertime when, uh, when this place is so smoked out because they let the forest burn because you can't do the tree. They won't let you t t cut the trees out. And this bill makes over 1,500 foot a setback on what they call riparian reserves, which are also a crime being perpetrated on land. There is no such thing. It's a made-up thing. It's only to the property owner that can do that. And that's also to be protective of the water, but they found out that the uh, the when you have a riparian areas that are covered over with trees, that's not good for fish. But no one wants to look at that. Science. Now, they give lip service to it so they can withdraw. This whole thing is about withdrawing your wealth. I told you this weeks ago, this is about your wealth and your production of wealth. Why? Because they want to shove you into sustainable debt. And they want to do this descent, I call it decentralized. Uh, it'll be digital, uh, digitized, and you're going to be through your local server. You'll be going through that for your fees and underneath your social credit. And you're not going to have a way to go out like they used to do in the 30s. When uh, the Depression hit the or Oregon, Southern Oregon, the people didn't suffer like everywhere else because the, everyone could go to the rivers and they could go get a little bit of gold and buy their, buy their uh, food. They're taking that away. This is how long this memory of attack is. If you think you can do it in a few weeks. Now, it can be done pretty quickly, but it's not going to be done by a few of us. It's going to be everybody, of all you all, taking consideration of what's really going on and figuring out that this is an attack, that this is a very stealthy attack, and this is a very effective attack. What have I been talking about? Mineral extraction and all this. What's the problem? We've got to save the fish. Well, they're not talking about eating the fish, are they? They're not talking about eating the fish, are they? No. That industry is being attacked. And they talk about mile upon mile upon mile of tributary now they're adding to this wild and scenic. And um, I, I just can't tell you the administrative hell that is put on people that live in these areas once the agencies come in to try and either force you out or get you to limit your property rights under contracts that they say you have to do, or else otherwise they'll come and condemn your land. If you don't think, you think this is just an attack on mining. No, this is an attack on all private property and its, and its use outside of the agenda that's coming to destroy your life. So, I've got a, a link to the text of the bill for those of you interested. It's like 600-something pages long. This thing was not a small attack. This is like Obama scare in a way. They Even i got a video here you can listen to. I think it was Mike Lee of Utah, Senator Mike Lee, saying, we, know, we didn't even get this bill hardly in time to see it. We have offered no input to this bill. And I would tell you, because of consensus, I already knew that. Consensus says the stakeholders would take over this, and the stakeholders are inside an agency. They're not the people that are going to be affected. And so everyone sits there and thinks it's not going to happen to them. And I'm wondering now, when they just went up miles and miles and miles of tributaries, of the major rivers to take you out there, what stops them? Because they're after the whole watershed. And you see, right before that, he said he's going to build on this. This is not the end of it. They're coming for more, these people. So I had some responses that uh, once I saw and it was given, a uh, link was given over to me to see that the signing had happened because we didn't know that it happened. We had just filed, uh, we had just filed our, 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 con our objection to this bill. And it's full. It just—it's treason, folks. I don't know what to say. It's a—it's a war crime what they're doing against you. It builds, and he says it's—they're going to build from this. It doesn't stop. They're going to take this foundation. And they're going to go after everything else and keep eating it up. And you're going to sit there as crickets. And there's a method to stop. And you're going to sit there as crickets. And then in the future, there's not going to be much of anything but you paying. You think you're a debt slave now? You watch and see what's happening. So after they showed the, it was given a link through a Twitter feed to show this uh, little video that they were doing the signing ceremony. And this was a democratically imposed thing that the, Repo that the Republicans agreed to. So they came in collusion by consensus to, and didn't look at their, their, their obligations and duties and made this thing happen. And no one actually got to read it like all the other legislation that's no good that comes by this process. And there's these like voices in the wilderness, these candles in the wilderness speaking about this in Congress, like Mike, Utah Mike Lee. Uh, he had his, his discussion, his observation. I think they're valid. Uh, there's a whole lot more he didn't talk about that's, I think, even more, more pertinent uh, to the expose exactly that this is an attack against you. 
whether you know that or not, that he, he explains that you need to really see how this, what, what really comes down with people. He'll, he'll tell you that none of these, none of the people that are actually affected were given any kind of error and that he never talks about in, uh, the, the fiduciary duties and breaches that are going on. So it's not even either in him, uh, as I was told by Ken Ivory out of Utah when I talked with him about his, uh, Ken Ivory solution revolution. I said, it's not a solution or a revolution. You, you've got six major problems with this and what you should be doing is looking over here where the answer already sits in the law. You don't have to invent new stuff. And he agreed. And I said, so what are you telling people then? Well, he was an attorney. He's after millions of dollars of funds to do a study group, right, to see how they're going to fix this. I said, you don't need a study group. You just have accountability in the law that already exists. But they don't want to do it that way. Why? Because they're coming to destroy you. And they make money as they go. But after this signing ceremony, I put out some things. So you know that I'm putting things out. You may not think that means much. But this gives me standing here when I do this. Because now I understand now going to the White House through Twitter and Donald Trump through Twitter is a communication that's, a, that's actually political. It's not just a note, a barren note. And here's my observation then, a few days ago. You may be interested, you may not be interested. But I, I think you should be interested because you're seeing what you don't see today that the law requires that has been cut out has been how the setup for the takedown was done. And I try to focus people... When I'm not trying to show you all the little things that are going on on Twitter, and I've been really cutting back now, I don't have the time, there's too much going on, I cut back on the Twitter, uh, so it's, I just, part of it I don't understand, I don't know why people go down the trails they do, so I don't know, I just put some stuff up and use it just to tell people that the broadcast is up and available, things I see, here's what, what I saw in this, it, it's such a, it's such a bad deal, uh, that I want to throw out some things that are not seen in this, I want to throw out things that uh, people won't understand anyway, but I throw it out there anyway so people can see it. Uh, because and, and, and I have to understand, I, I, I develop quite a bit inside these little 288 character things, and I speak two things as well as I speak to expose things. Remember, we're talking about a guy who considers himself a genius, and all these people will think that they're uh, such a geniuses, so I figured I'd lead off with that. Hey, geniuses, you guys, you folks at this signing ceremony and the signing of this bill. Hey, geniuses. How does POTUS expect miners to get those critical minerals needed for national security and other minerals to make America great again, withdrawing, thieving the most valuable mineral areas? Where was the mineral estate trustee on this treasonous bipartisan plunder? I'm pausing a bit. Did you understand what I just said, folks? Did you fully appreciate what I'm saying here? Now, maybe I think too highly of myself, but did you know there was supposed to be a mineral, mineral estate trustee that was in on this that couldn't have allowed what you see? And the fact that you didn't hear about it and you won't because it doesn't exist, even though we've been advocating for it and telling people and giving notice to this very same president it has to happen, that they won't, to tell you how well I know this thing's a setup for the takedown and it was meant this way because you're all being silent? How do I know it's a bipartisan plunder? Because they said it's bipartisan. How do I know it's a plunder? They use consensus. They didn't stop and look at this trustee and have that trustee step in and see where they were overstepping their bounds. We have one in the Small Business Administration. It's called Advocacy, Advocacy is the name of it. It's a it's a uh, trustee for the money spent to small business and how the agencies uh, and it checks to make sure that the agencies don't run over their run over their own authority when they if they come to harm uh, in the harm business or where the government's going to put its money to invo invest in small business. A mineral trustee, a state trustee, is supposed to exist, but it doesn't. And so these, I can tell, we already given the notice to POTUS. He made a critical, he made a, a, an EO. This is not my words, folks. He just made an EO a couple months ago. We need critical materials. China's going to take us down. This is a national security, uh, national security problem. I already know it's a national security, folks, uh, problem, folks. It's in the law. You don't mess with that, with your minerals in the country because it's a, it's a, it, it, it's a national security interest, period. But we gave that notice to them as well. Do you think they would listen? No, because they're unaccountable. These people are after your throat. They're going to stab you in the heart, stab you in the neck, and they're going to shoot you and leave you in the ditch, and they don't care. Because you're a problem. You're a convict. Remember? You're a carbon convict. And they're after the economy, and they're after the very foundation of your society in this. And this is what, they, what they'll do, and we get moving on. So that's what I already put out there. Okay, geniuses, how are you supposed to not get your credit? You want to talk about the, the excuse of national security? You see what I did there too, folks? I've told you, you put up 
The thing that they use as an excuse is the thing they violated. If they think that they're getting away with something because they're just such geniuses and so smart. Well, they're smart, but they're not too intelligent. They're smart because smart is sustainable development and an attack. It's a direct attack on your wealth in your in your country, not the debt side. I keep trying to tell you this about the importance of that Fed, Federal Reserve notation that they use silver and gold money. They can only enter it on the ledger of the asset side. It's not debt. This is your wealth distinction. This is the distinction in the world against this oppression. So I point out to this guy in the uh, office, you had an obligation to not sign this because you didn't go check the, with the mineral estate trustee. We've said this is not even something we don't say before. We've said we haven't said before. We also point out that even the BLM, the administer of the mineral estate in trust, where these areas are supposed to be withdrawn, is supposed to be doing a mineral assessment. In every instance, they didn't. And in every instance we had an opportunity to comment, we pointed that out. There's a special section of the code for that, of the rule, excuse me, the, the rule for them. Why? Because they can't withdraw the minerals that they know are there. And so we found out they weren't going to do the assessments so that they didn't have to tell anybody they were stealing the minerals from you all. Well, they go through someone like myself to go get the mineral, but we don't hold it. We hand it on to something else, someone else. There's a whole chain of things that go on. You got your process. You got the collecting, the sub collector that collects all this stuff, who sends it to a, a buyer, who sends it to a smelter, to sends it to a processor, uh, who then makes it into something. The economy, folks, but businesses get supported by what we do at raw materials production. So we get our little bit. Uh, we take have to take our expenses out. But we get it out of the bank, the literal dirt. The same thing they claim they're protecting is the same place where your wealth is that they're attacking. These people were not too stupid on how they figured out how they were going to attack you. So we ask all the time, where's your mineral assessment? They don't have any. For those miners out there, those grantees, you better keep to start making a list on what I'm saying about where the important problems are because when they come after you underneath this land bill to, st to force a mineral exam on you now, after the fact, without understanding the assessment, see, now they got that covered up too. But you're going to have to prove that you have the mineral enough to make it mineral in character. And do you think, and we've seen this proof, I'm not going to even talk conjecturally, we've seen the proof, the mineral, the certif so-called certified mineral examiner for the agency will not do the test correctly to find your mineral. So you're in some trouble. For all those of you kicking back saying, oh, I don't have to worry, I got mine. I got mine, and I will work with that the problem in the future. Right now, because I've heard this as well, well, the BLM hasn't given any, hasn't given any money to to go uh, do the exams. The, in this act, they just did the land conservation plan. They may be able to segue money from there to do it, so it may come quicker than you expect. That everybody in these lands will now have to prove their rights. That's another administrative hell they put you under that they're in control over. No different than it said against private property owners when the, the, the government comes knocking on your door and says, you have to do something, and they come completely ignore and will not recognize the provision, the savings provision in this bill that says subject to valid existing rights. And so let's move on to that in my comment. Enough to make me start cussing with my next post to POTUS, the real Donald Trump and the White House. These are posted mainly for memory aids and for anybody that's interested to see what the problems are in this. I say now, after that, enough to make me start cussing, because, folks, I really, I'm running out of ideas, I'm running out of knowledge, I'm running out of the need for intelligence, I'm running out because there's this cricket, so I can only do so much. So now I'm frustrated. And so I start cussing if I wanted to. But that's not going to help me, and I know it. I've already been through that process. I've been, I've been there, done that, I'm now beyond now, we have work to do. That's not being responsible going that direction, and it doesn't serve a purpose other than to send the signal to the other side that they've won. Enough to make me start cussing. You know the administrative hell you've unleashed upon innocent local people, real Donald Trump, because of the equally continuous traitorous government fiduciary breach, ignoring what, quote, 
subject to valid existing rights, close quote, means, don't you? If not, why not? You understand here in these statements, I'm putting out the fact of what was supposed, what goes on, and I'm wanting to, I'm challenging this idiot who claims to be a genius and those around him uh, that they are making the right decisions. And I can already know they, if they knew, then that agrees that they're coming to kill you and harm you and hurt you and deprive you and every other heinous thing that they plan on it. If they don't know this. Unless they don't know that. If they don't know this, then you got a bunch of uh, incompetence. And they're hurting you anyway. So, well, along with this bill, folks, if you live in any one of these areas, and they weren't, they weren't, it says they were focused in Oregon, but it went across the country. Utah was complaining about it. It's everywhere. It was everywhere in different modes, in different ways. And we see from the main proponent of it, they're using it to build to make it worse for you in the future. And I'm pointing out on this uh, uh, Twitter uh, post, there's so, the, the government does not recognize any valid existing rights. And I want you to hear that so that you understand what your record has to look like as you go in and what the focus will be. As I've uh, explained a bit, uh, when a uh, so-called judge who'd had no competency in a court case just ignored the title and then spoke to a part of a title, to try and destroy the existence of the title. Told me he knew exactly what he was doing, and so he was a criminal in a robe. And when we get into that, I won't go into that today. For this broadcast, in these public lands, titles for minors, uh, you have what's a split title. And you have the legal title that sits in the government as the source of, this, of the title, waiting for the perfection to patent. And then you have the other side, which is the beneficial title, or called equitable title. And when a judge comes in, when you're doing an equitable title case, and the judge starts talking legal, you realize he's either not wanting to identify the title, which well, is the ultimate goal anyway, no matter how he, what he wants, or he's trying to make you the one that does that can't have the title that he's trying to force you to have. In other words. If I've got legal title that's held in by the government, if I talk legal title, I'm talking without any authority because I don't have legal title. If he puts it in the record that I'm de dealing in legal title, it makes my paper frivolous. That simple. But if you don't understand, that's what I say, you don't understand about property, titles, doc documents, what it all means, the evidence, what it's for, the relationships, they have you by the throat. And I think, the way I look at all this in, in anymore, with all the lack of response, they have you by the throat, folks. And I don't think that anybody's going to use a gun to stop this one. For all y'all think you've got a Second Amendment right, you can do it, wait till the last minute. See the whites of your eyes. You, they're transparent to you, folks. How do you see the whites of their eyes? And so, going on. So we have a, I, I tell the, the Donald Trump, he knows the administrative hell he's putting on these people. Now I'm getting accusatory a little bit here as well. Why? Because he's got a fiduciary to stop this, and he didn't. And if you have a question as to whether or not he could have, well, I'm going to give you that in a few seconds here, and I get past this, maybe a few minutes, actually. My last uh, post to them at this point, and I did think about these folks. I didn't want to just start throwing this stuff out there, but I know the process, and I figured I better be on record about this. This is for me. This is for my claim. This is for how they're going to treat us in the future that I'm making this notice now, and a memory aid as well. You can benefit from it, those of you that are interested. They're going to come after your lands. They're going to come after your rights. They're going to come after even if you want to go visit. I don't know how to expand this to get you interested, so I just keep throwing stuff out there. This is a blanket attack, and you don't understand it, and they're going to build on this to take more, and they're hitting you right in your pocketbook, so to speak, even though you don't understand that, that it is in your pocketbook, or that you ever bring it out, like let's say I might out the minerals out of the land to give to someone to give to you eventually. And so I started to think a little bit deeper, and I said, okay, where has this been going? What is our example? When they come and do these conservation issues, what have I noticed what they've been doing? And the little things came through here in the Malheur matter. We tried to get in touch with the kid who brought up his own study. He found all the stuff we had found. Then he went for a little further, and, and we never really got the evidence because he stopped talking to us, and we said, we, give us your evidence so we can tie it together with this, although he gave us some in, insight on what we were looking for. Again, it's follow the money. Remember that little thing called Uranium One? 
Yeah, he stumbled onto that. We were onto it right before that. That was an Oregon one. Had to do with the Calico Mine and had to do with one of the senator representatives in Oregon, a Republican, that was sending everybody down the river. His brother was an attorney who was working with Calico, got a sweetheart deal in 2013 when we did our lawsuit. Not because of them, but Bence, this guy Bence was named, that's the, the senator, who was doing sweetheart deals to affect and allow Uranium One. So we have the evidence of what they were doing there when you see what happens now in this uh, translation over from Uranium One through Canada and the and, and offshooting the, the, that through the laws. And I don't even know that they did that law right, but it doesn't matter. No one notices the law. They just say, oh, there's the scandal about Uranium One in Russia and Putin done it. Now, we looked into that after we saw some of this uh, more information, uh, just, just bits of information that were coming out in someone else's analysis. And I said, I looked at one of my uh, colleagues, and I said, that sounds what they're doing. They, they're they not telling us, but it looks like they've set this up to do what you're doing with your mining deposit. And so I started looking at this information now with a new eye, another new eyeball, not just a plunder against us and a theft of the minerals and all that, and some people learning to figure out how to steal it. But I figured out through that, and then we go through leverage funding streams and how they're sequestering money and, and looking behind the scenes at hedge funds and looking at monetization. And I said, you know what? These conservation areas are being conserved and protected by the power of the United States to never be used. And anybody who sees that, uh, who, who knows that, can take that as an asset value against a, 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 an investment. And then monetize that, and then monetize the protection of it, which is guaranteed by the United States government. They have two funding streams that you'll never get at, and nobody knows where it went. And so, based on that observation, if you don't think I try to tie things together, whether you all understand what I'm doing or not, and I'm tying it a little bit better together because I have the points to point to you if you're interested, you go see how uh, this does done. I bring up the, the idea for them, and just in case it's there, because there's no other reason, folks. There's no other lawful reason for these things to be doing the way they're going on unless someone's, these people are all in on a big plunder and they're getting a cut on it. Otherwise, they would have followed the law. The, the payout is so high on this, they're willing to break the law and hope nobody sees it. And so I ask, based on our experience, not my opinion, folks, is what we've our research and our, we just happen to be in the right place. You know, you get in the, you've been told you get in the right, you do something and you get yourself in sync synchronicity, you get your place in the right place at the right time, you prepare for 25 years, and then you're an overnight success. That's what this Jefferson Mining District endeavor has been turning out to be. We were on point with this. Uh, it's a hard for us, my colleagues and I, not to use the word, we don't use it every often, but it keeps coming up routinely. Uh, the There's so, something beyond us about this. Providence is the word we keep trying to Avoid using, we can't help. Every time we turn around, we're in this thing, right on point, in the truth, in the law, and something else is given to us, handed to us to expose or to work out to be exposed. And you, that's why I keep telling you, until you get in this, you'll never understand this. There's an aid that comes along, whether or not it looks like we're doing much, folks. All I can tell you is, why didn't they go up the creek that our claim was on if we had told them that there was no salmon? Why didn't they just take the whole creek? unless there was a witness to the crime and would give them standing with the witness, prior comment that would say, you knew better right here, and give us the ability to pry into that whole thing and, and stop it. No, there's an intelligence working, and, and there's a help that comes, and you'll never see this until, until you get involved. And so why would I even be here to be able to talk about this? It's, it always blows me away. Is it important to much to anybody? I don't know. I, can, I would have to say no because I don't see any response to this very important stuff. It's not important, apparently. So I'm a nut to think that this is. I'm a madman behind the woodshed. But here I'm going to say this part so you understand how this may be coming through. You can better believe I'm looking heaven eyes, although this stuff is so privatized, I don't think I'll ever be able to see it. I just know it's how this works. My last post to the POTUS on this land bill, because he was the last pin, uh, the last obstruction to force the Senate and the and the Congress to reconfirm their plunder. He could have stopped it. He didn't, folks. He didn't. Very disappointing. In other words, he has no principle in him. For those of you that want to support Trump, there's no principle in him. And this is what I put out there because there's always follow the money. I'm going to anticipate the money, folks. 
if I put something into conservation and I know the value of that because it's not being used, has a value that's not going to be touched, I can monetize that. And then I can I can put I can ensure that that's another monetization. You, you remember the, the term we we heard? It was uh, derivative derivatives, folks. This is what we're talking about. There's a whole the new whole economy that's happened since 2008. They've been working on this thing since then for doing all this stuff. I think someone figured this out. I didn't figure it out. I just figured out through the elements and the evidences of going on and compared to how you, how you go about monetizing things. I learned that from a colleague who was doing it on their mining claim. I didn't know all that. I got to go keep it. I got to pay attention. I'm not so so intelligent sometimes. I'm too, I'm too laid back and innocent to be going out and working. I, I'm not driven by by the material things in the world, and I haven't been for quite a few years. And so I don't go out looking at this stuff. But I'm observant to it. Let me finish this off. This is a so my last comment on this landlord. I'm trying to bring up different aspects of this in three short posts, 288 characters a, 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 a time, to expose to anybody who wants to read it the dimensions to this plunder. Why would they do this? One of the reasons why they would want to is a financial gain that we don't know. Remember, they called them offices of profit. My last post is this. This is a domesticated uranium one, right? Putin help? You all take a hedge fund account monetizing secured, quote, conservation lands with maintenance appropriations to make war on the local people. If not, explain this bipartisan breach of fiduciary POTUS, Donald Trump and the White House. Is that important to anybody? Probably not. You probably don't even maybe understand what I'm saying unless I just told you and then you haven't thought about it. Do you understand that they're stealing your lands and, the, and you have the underlying grants to the people, whether you take them up or not, they're there in trust they're not supposed to be touched anymore. But these people are using that, throwing it into non-use, committing a war crime against you in the process, and making money on this, given they can find a funding source. Do you think these people are connected to find a funding source for their monetization? Do you even know anything about that whole nonsensory uh, fiat condition called derivative funding? Do we have any concept? We don't have a concept on that. Well, okay, I've given you an idea. So, whether you're interested or not, I don't know. You should be. These people are willfully plundering your lands and going to affect you, and they're going to constrain everything, and that makes other things more valuable. And then they attack that. They take value for that. They take all that from you. Why? Because you don't understand about property and how officials, you know, they're the terrorists. And again, they're ruled by fear, intimidation, and dread. The, what they've learned is also to make colorable uh, a colorable right. In other words, this legislation looks like it's a color of law authority. And yet when we look at it as minors and grantees and beneficiaries, being, we look at it as a very uh, a violation of the, it's a trustee's breach. And I told our guys last, uh, last Friday in our in mind district, we have to start getting, we don't talk about it too much because we don't, they don't, they don't want to talk about it this way, but, as we start now talking, because this now attack is in us now, and it's obvious now, and it's, we, it's obvious across the entirety of our government that was supposed to be serving us, but they're no longer serving us. We're going to have to speak in this way uniformly before, so that everybody starts to see what the real issue is. It isn't about fish. It's not about drinking water. It's not about uh, Whatever, I don't go on and on, whatever they talk about, about the carbon, none of that. It's about a group of people, a monocracy, who has called you a carbon criminal, you remain crickets, and they are going to take the day because of it. So how did I get to there? Well, it's the whole process, folks. It's, you don't got to see this whole totality. They're after, this is after your economic well-being. You look, I have a video, like I said, of, uh, I think it's, his name is Mike Lee, Senator Mike Lee out of Utah. He's saying that this is not helping anybody on the ground in Utah. And it hands into one, one, uh, one man the, or woman, the president, yet, or maybe a woman, maybe in this country, everywhere else in the world it seems, but not in the United States being so, so equal, is it? But, uh, maybe one, one man has the right overnight. Now, apparently they've also expanded the 1906 Act. Uh, I can't, it just slipped my mind. 
for the Antiquities Act. That's what it is. Uh, and because we've been fighting that as well, that gives one man the right to overnight make large areas. I've never planned to be this large areas they can sequester away. And then they can monetize those. Now, we don't know where the hedge fund is that's doing it. Maybe it's some Panama uh, organization that does it. The Panama Papers, you think, folks? You think some offshore trust account that knows about this stuff? Monetize, you think the Chinese got it? Uh, well, think again, folks. You know, these are plunderers inside your own government, and you're crickets to it all. And I'm showing you right up in the news, this main bill took them 10 years to get the guts to do this, and they did it, and they pulled the trigger on you, folks. Now, we were inside looking at this, trying to stop it with meager tools, and that gave us now the evidence to know what I'm telling you today. We have a written record of how this really worked out. You think that Trump couldn't have stopped that? You, you think that Trump couldn't have stopped an attack on the mainland Given he's so focused on national security, do you think he could have stopped this with a veto? Or do we have evidence that he doesn't care to stop genocide against people? Remember I told you that issue a long time ago. I said, look at Syria. I look at Syria, not for the Middle East war, not for all that. I look at it as the carnival mirror, that warped, that warped reflection that what we see happening over in the Middle East, that the hands of the United States government is what they're doing to you here. These kinds of people, these people that would sign, that make it look like this is the greatest thing since sliced white bread and, and, and refrigerators, are actually plundering it, the nation of its wealth and stabbing, your, stabbing you right in your heart, and that for your future generations. No, we have evidence that he could have stopped it, but we have evidence that he won't stop it if it continues genocide. White House advisors recommend Trump veto Yemen resolution. In the news, the Senate got together and said, no, we're going to shut down this, 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 this Yemen nonsense that we're, we're supporting. We want to shut it down. The, the, the White House comes back and says, no, we, we're going to have Trump veto that. We want to continue the, the wrongful, the genocide of his rightful genocide, the, the wrongful actions that we're taking in Yemen. The carnival mirror is, they just did a bill to cause genocide on you, whether you recognize that or not. In the pulling out of the valuable minerals and raw materials that you need out of your out of your raw, out of your public lands, they're willing to continue genocide. What does what? And now on the counter, remember I told you he was all interested in, in to prove he's interested in national security, and he will take acts in order to protect that. He wouldn't commit to, to make to stop that land bill to continue the critical materials to save you. That was under the excuse of national security. He will, and he did issue Trump, this guy Trump, issues the first veto to stop Congress from halting the national emergency when he wants to make his wall, the wall to keep you in. He issued, for the basis of national security, he wouldn't stop the land bill, which would take away the miners getting the critical minerals. But he will stop this this bill that doesn't give him the wall for the same reason. Has to tell you we've got we're dealing with a lunatic. Talk about split personalities. Or these people are really smart, not too intelligent, but they got they got their hand out in a bank somewhere and it's a it's some kind of an offshore account or accounting or hedge fund that they're all going to get parts of because they put all this stuff that they are putting away in withdrawals so you can't use it. Endangering your local county, your local uh, areas, well, they say that they need consensus by the county. The counties have to step up now and stop this at will so they don't give over consensus. And interestingly, too, the, I was telling you about the smoke ordinance. The way you address this will be through the things I developed in that smoke ordinance. It's fascinating when you see what's going on, how you can anticipate the future where this stuff goes. My problem is looking out and seeing no one else wants to get a, get a quite understanding and actually start to do something that's effective. No, no, we'd rather go in the chat rooms and argue or get on the emails and scream at each other, send pictures or do memifications and all this other stuff while these people are taking you down. Trump doesn't care to continue, doesn't care that he's going to continue genocide. He's going to do it against you, the carnival mirror that is here when he didn't stop the land bill. But he'll stop for the same reason of national security. He'll stop the Congress from trying to stop his emergency. He'll force them to go take the vote and get the popular, the uh, the, other way, the two-thirds vote when they have to go get it, uh, overcome a veto. 
So if you thought the national emergency was not important, here says it is, but he didn't do it to support the other act. He's interested in continuing genocide, uh, which means that if you look at that and they now interfere with national security, apparently that's national security and critical minerals was not really, a, it was a lie. Because he's willing to commit genocide against you. If you don't think it's genocide, look around. You don't, don't consider your color. Because you're all colored. I keep telling you about this 1942-1981 law, 42 U.S.C. 1981. You're all colored people. You're colored by the law. Why? The same way they use the color of this authority to destroy you. And if you don't understand what they're doing here and to, to grasp the concept, you won't have the word power or the idea, the conceptual power in order to stop them when they come at you. In this case, an extension of this case, or the ripple effect that's created because of this case. And eventually to you landowners or everything where you're, now your localities are trying to bring into, uh, implement the consensus that they've agreed to that's so warm and fuzzy. Well, we need fish and we need water for fish to drink. Oh, that's so good. And we need recreation. Like that's the first thing you're going to talk about when you're starving to death. I, I, de it was a accidentally. I, I ran across this thing. It was, oh, well, this is interesting how this accidentally shows up, but this is the point. You know where in the scheme of this thing and the way this uh, this nation is set up, talking about an attack on your economy, talking about an attack on the foundation. I ran across this thing called, I've already known about this, I've mentioned it before, just in passing. It was just a website that was speaking to this subject matter called Tertiary Sector. Well, what's that? Well, that's the tertiary economy, folks. It's the third level section of, e of how they delineate the hierarchy of economies in the United States of America. And I won't go through, again, the links you can read. You need to understand this stuff because this is what they're attacking. But this is what the tertiary is. And I'm just going to go the, read the first part, go read the list, and I want to get to the point where it says primary economy because this is the tertiary. I told you there's primary, secondary, and, and, and tertiary. Here's the tertiary. What is the tertiary? The tertiary sector of the economy is a collection of industries that produce mostly intangible value, meaning the value that has no physical form. It is a hallmark of advanced economies to have large tertiary sector. Listen to this, folks. Did you hear me? I said they're destroying the primary. This is the hallmark. This tertiary, the ripple, third ripple away, is the hallmark of advanced economies to have a large tertiary sector that generates a high percentage of GDP and employment. The following are examples of industries that are considered part of the tertiary sector. This is kind of fascinating in a way as well. And industries in the tertiary sector, creating intangible value. Education, utilities, transportation. Your mind has to be connecting up these things that they're attacking these as well in the transportation plans. They go after utilities. They're using the, this is the 5G. This is the uh, po uh, utilities, the power company, the smart meters. All this is in the tertiary side. They're already attacking that, if you see. Hospitality, finance, insurance, media, entertainment, events, information technology, healthcare, consulting, professional services, agents and brokers, business services, and Public services. Did you know that, folks? That public services, the services provided by a government such as public infrastructure, public education, which was the first in the list list, and public health care is a tertiary sector of the economy. It requires the secondary then, doesn't it? It requires the primary then, doesn't it? But it's the tertiary. It's not. It's three times away from the most important thing you have to have in a, in a society. It is the government itself. The very thing that's being destroyed as well by these kinds of acts that I keep talking to you about through the alternative dispute resolution consensus process bringing on the UN agenda. What the bill, the land bill does, it tax the primary. Well, let's, let's look at some of that. Let's just go right to it. Let's just jump to secondary, and let's look at what is primary. They call it industry. 
I've also, I want to remind you, and I've also told you, we've got a little book from 1937, and right in there, written by Munro, M-U-N-R-O, on one of the pages, I don't remember now where, it says that uh, a lot of people think that raw material production, lumber, timber, uh, mining, agriculture, they think that's commerce. But that's a mistake. It's a mistake of understanding on, on how this all works. What these things are, are production. They're distinct from commerce. Well, you've heard me over and over and over make the distinction. Primary economy, as they point out in this, primary industry, primary, 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 you've got, you got to have this before you can have the rest, is production. Primary industry is a sector of the economy that extracts and processes natural resources. This can be compared to secondary industry that turns natural resources into finished products such as manufacturing and construction businesses. The following are the basic types of primary industry. Mining, forestry, farming, fishing, not saving fishes and water for fish to drink, no, fishing, actually extracting the fish, the harvest, creating the harvest, the extraction of the minerals. Let's go through the list again. Primary industry, mining, forestry, farming, fishing. Did you hear in those landfills that they're making, what, saving, taking water away from you to give to fish and to, for the fish to drink and breed but not to be harvested? That's what that bill does. Do you hear a direct attack on mining? And so here we have, in another totally different place you can read, what a primary industry is, is the thing that is not spoken to and protected in that law, that land act, that Democrats and Republicans and attorneys, because they're mostly all wrapped up in there as well, don't forget those, those are geniuses, and the president, the biggest genius apparently by his own statement, attacked and destroyed, in some areas, the primary industries that support what, folks? They support, eventually, work out and support the government itself. In other words, there's two forms of life in this country where government's not even needed, if you can get it that way. But they take out your primary industry, and they take out the rest of your society on an economic sense, is what I've been telling you is the attack that they're doing. Sustainable development, global warming, all these other things, whatever they want to talk about, so secured food, modernize this, enhance that, is an attack on your economy. And the way they stab you in the heart, and I really don't know how fatal this is unless you can rally up to, to pull the knife out and, and plug your hole and stop the bleeding, is you have to reinvigorate that primary industry. And they just stabbed a heart in it in Oregon. And they want to build b upon that murder. I don't know where all y'all are. I don't know how interested y'all are on this. When they're taking out your primary economy somewhere, they're going to take it out anywhere. And I say that because you're crickets. So just Trump had the ability to make a point to say national security requires I can't sign this land bill because you're interfering with the primary uh, industry if he's interested in that and economy and jobs. See, they call this is the green job. Did you hear in the primary industry recreation listed it anywhere in there? Anywhere, folks. Anywhere? No. So they traded a primary industry in this land bill for recreation is not a primary industry. They diminished, even if so, diminished your society that bit when they did that trade-off. Let me touch quickly on the land grants here. you got the mineral grant, but what about, and I talked to the miners, the, the grantees assembly here Friday. Let's bring up an old word I used to use a little bit more. I use these terms when I need to, and in context we haven't been in the subject matter, but it comes today. We use the word contemporaneous. No, that's not a multisyllabic word that I'm using just to make me sound smart. That was used in court cases and used in the, in the fact of it all about the nature and relationship of minerals to water. They're contemporaneous. What does that mean? In a nutshell, I'll say it's like they're Siamese twins, and they're not separated at birth. These are Siamese twins. One goes with the other. When, so I said, well, when they attack the water, it took me a couple of days to start looking at it this way because you got to work through stuff. It's not like I see this and it's all instantaneous. It has to go through a process of qualification because, again, I don't have the right, right I don't have the luxury of being wrong once here. But I do have to an, analyze for the extent of the harm. But when they attacked the water and gave it to fish, in the 1866 Act, they gave the water to you all on a state level appropriation. 
Do they have the Congress, the grand tour of that, have the right to come back in, in 2019 and take the water and give it to the fish? No, that's a trust breach right up front. And if they did, the people who wanted water for fish would have to justify that where? At the state level. You want to talk? Now we're back into states' rights. Those of you who have, who do support states' rights, now you should be listening. Because all these land disposals, these water disposals, these contemporaneous things that are for raw materials or primary economy pro, uh, industry are the things regulated underneath the state, not as a regulation administration, but for how you acquire. You're going to acquire, but how? And under water, you have a water, Western Water Appropriations Doctrine. You do it in time. That's what you call seniority. Here's the interesting thing about a miner and how contemporaneous all this is for mining. Miners, it's a term, another term I used to use. So I'll use it here again. I've talked to you here about it. We'll bring it back up. Don't use it much because it's kind of special, special stuff. It's what, what, what is when you use water, what would be the word? What you, they, they call you this now in economy. You're nothing but a consumer. So what is the water you use and take in but a consumption? I don't know if you ever heard this, but what miners do with water, is non-consumptive. In other words, we miners don't use water. Now, there is some waste of drainage and evaporation ponds and all that. There, that's been all considered to be a pertinent, the right to use water. But it's non-consumptive. When they said they were stealing water from the miner to feed the fish, they never went through the state to make sure the fish, the fish never filed for the water. They also then. They didn't, didn't understand it. The water, the miner can't be blamed because his use is non-consumptive. It's never taken away from the system, actually. And so I just, again, there's lots of ways to go out. This is the attack that was done. They wanted to say, tell you that you had drinking water problems. But they actually, if you look carefully, they're talking about the fish have to drink the water, apparently. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, even... Giving them the fact that they could do that, they would have had to go to the state and claimed an appropriation for that water in time of seniority. And so all y'all, you rural folks, that you think you're going to get this water, no, it's been, it's been sequestered now for fish. You could not make a claim there. Well, you could under law, but there's no law. See, there's no, there's the bar members, the same lawyers that discarded the plunder and allowed the plunder are in the seats of that decision. You have to figure out a way to get rid of that. I've explained all that. And then we have to have a mass awareness on how that corruption is and how we don't have to regard it anymore. So let me get to the point back. I always get to it so I don't lose it because this is the most important part. This land package was a bipartisan, treasonous plunder, stealing that's granted things to you for invaluable things, aesthetic things. That are not primary to the continue the, the continuance of your society and attack everything ev out of that layer. In other words, this is a two-step process to destroying the very uh, established of uh, a way that you would defend yourself when it goes after the intangible value of the government that was sitting there like our mining district would be and the records department that they have in order to show that your evidence of what your rights are. Remember, the savings clause in the land, in the land law, uh, in the land package was a subject to valid existing rights. They take away your ability to prove that if you don't have those by taking away your government that protects that in your, in your local counties. See how this all starts to work? You don't see that now. This is all incremental. After looking at this bill, I'm almost I'm almost going to do a flip flop. Although I don't think it's going to happen. It's it's nice. It's fun to think about. I'm getting sick and tired of this thing. Maybe it's you know we talk about bringing on ask, invoke the giant meteor, folks. Well, politically, maybe it's time to invoke the power of the Democrats to destroy this place. Why? Because when all of y'all are finally not incrementally affected, but immediately affected, maybe you'll finally stop being crickets. Because I'm getting tired, folks. I really get tired. This is not my life. A long time ago, and for most of my life, I was considered carefree. I haven't been so carefree when it started to realize the the plunder that we were under, the, the deception, and that it was partly my responsibility to to, con, to contain it, fix it, make it accountable. So, here we have a land bill that President Trump did not get in the way of, even to cause a secondary vote to overthrow his veto, to give him a platform to say, I am protecting the people through this attack because of national security, 
because of the obligations of the United States, because of my financial, uh, my fiduciary duty to do so, because of their fiduciary duty to do so. And on top of that, I'm going to make some changes. Like, where is that mineral trust, the state trustee, folks? They could, he could order that up in a heartbeat for national security reasons. Did he did that? No, he's going to veto the law that stops the genocide uh, against Yemen. He's going to pass and not veto the law that creates the ge economic genocide against y'all in the states. You see, are, are you are people picking this up here that I'm telling you on the, on the broadcast? I don't know. I get no feedback. This is very difficult at some level. I wish we had a conversation. And very quickly, I'd find out who was interested and who wouldn't. And then, again, we'd have this small little group because I don't know that many people are truly interested. Oh, well, you want to hear about it. You want to be able to have a thought in your brain to think about it. You want to mull it over. I get all that. That's an interest thing. But you, we're not going to take the next steps to actually uh, start to uh, assert it. And i, I got to say, folks, I mean, sometimes it's, you don't know this, but I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what people pick up at the mining, uh, the mining district meeting. The guy's sitting there in the meeting, and I was asking him questions through this. I was explaining this thing. We went into the more technical aspects of how we, def we defend our property through our title and, and, and the technical aspects between the the legal title side and the beneficial or, or equitable title side. And I was just so, while I was talking, I was asking questions, the answers were coming back. The answers, for the most part, were, were coming back where in the past answers to my questions weren't happening, which means inside these guys is the knowledge of how they're going to be able to protect themselves. That has to be in you, folks. You may not see the imperative, but but I, I if, you, if you've ever been listening to me this long for, for all this time, Get, at least, at least, give me that much, um, that much credibility to tell you you get a, you have to start looking at this. It's not just coming to the minerals is the problem. I don't know if you understand. I told you this years ago. The modernization, the housing modernization acts, the food security acts, the uh, water purification. I said the whole country is polluted. Why are they doing this? Because they're bringing in standards to take it away from you. Again, regulation is a criminalization. Remember, remember. And then the, the, the other twist, the non-use, they don't have to regulate. They just keep you from it. And as I told you, just go look at sabotage. Go look at the, you know, and I don't, I'm sorry, I didn't go look at the number. Under you know, 18 USC, just type in 18 USC and sabotage it, and maybe you'll see just the list of stuff that's in there. And then go compare it to this lands bill, what they do. When you're in peace and settlement, and this administratively changes the land around you to lead, wild and scenic, scenic or wild, and the administ federal administration who don't care about you, otherwise they'd be doing a whole lot different, is coming against you. The same plunderers, the tools, the weapons, these agencies against you that are advancing this thing come against you. And you don't know how to respond. I just tell you because it's evidenced in the prior history of this thing happening once before, in the first time they put the wheel and scenic in these areas. People lost their places. They lost their houses. They were now conditioned to contracts. They now do not really have land, notwithstanding the savings clause, because nobody knew how to assert it, and correctly, even after asserting it, they won't listen. They don't listen to you. They don't know, not listening to me, that you've heard me say over and over how you would address this, and, and I've said how you take it out of the, out of the, out of the, out of the, fiduciary, the judiciary, because those people are there to what? Promote this sustainable debt. They say it in their documents. The Bar Association members are here to promote that system. This very thing, reason that they will pretend that they can transfer wealth from them to to the, from you to them, or and into something intangible, not even in the primary support of your nation to recreational. You got to ask yourself if if everything in the West is an appropriated water right, how did the fish get the right? How, how did the people get drinking water that don't exist yet to to maintain withdrawals of water? How does this happen? Uh, you want a court case of the authority that I'm speaking of? Uh, you know the New Mexico case in 1978, a, a, a very interesting case. It says all that I'm telling you. Again, I didn't know this stuff, and I mean I had the foundation to receive it. So when I got to these court cases, they started making a lot of sense. No, no, no. They can't retain the water this way. This is a plunder right in front of everybody's face. Where is everybody to call it out? We we need help. We need the mass of educated people, folks. It's, it takes a bit, but you have to be there. 
Now, what, when I'm saying, okay, so they get rid of your, your primary industry. Uh, they, we now know there's a secondary industry and there's a tertiary industry. All spinoffs from your very first uh, natural resources extraction te- uh, industries. They're stripping you of all that. They're stripping you of all the, uh, the, the subsequent economies that develop around you, the services that you need. They strip you from your government. The, they attack the finances, which is the, invi- the, the service of financing is this invi- They're attacking that. What are they going to reduce this to since they're now in the control seat? I'm telling you it's kind of, although they have a problem with going cashless, they're going to make it as cashless as possible. And yet we see the, again, because it's not law, it's this idea, this feel-good idea, this technocratic implementation of a world, somebody's world view, utopia, that they have a better thought than you, even over what the objective basis says that would say that they're criminals for doing what they do. You know, I haven't even brought the felonies up. You know, I usually do. Well, okay, I just stated I'm not going to go down that track. It's so easy to bring up once they come under a color of authority to interfere with your property. And the color of authority in this land law could do that to give them your very first act of their of their insolence against the law and your very first statement out of your mouth when they come with a request that may sound like no no request at all but a demand. You tell them what you're doing is a color of authority felony, multiple felonies. Remember, I keep talking about that. Enough. Move on. They're attacking your financial. They this whole sustainable this is a sustainable attack to bring on sustainable debt. And that'll have to be controlled in the technocratic sense. Again, I don't think technocracy is the thing. I think it's the weapon and the tool they're using to implement this thing. Uh, that, that we now have a report as I move through this. Uh, your your foundational industries, from production into services, from production to post uh, extraction, uh, production and, and then into services supporting this. What you see, the tertiary actually employs more people. So when you interfere, I guess to get the other point is when you interfere with a primary industry, look at the pyramid of a, of destruction that starts happening as the expanded util- services are now cut off because there's just not enough services to support and nothing that you lose your jobs. Also, can't speak well to Trump where he wants to promote jobs and says that all of a sudden jobs have been uh, are better. No, it, it takes a while for this thing to, to, to work down. You aren't going to see it overnight all of a sudden jobs. They evaporate over time. We have seen already an immediate uh, kick down, even though they focused on mining, uh, to destroy mining. They also, because I told you the riparian reserves that they've expanded, and now the controls they put on conservation, no use, no timber harvest. We already have a mill already going to go down, if you don't think that the primary industries know about this and the problem. Half a mill has to go down, and we don't have many mills to do this stuff in the in the in the West anymore. If you don't think this is real, no, all those people that have these service industry extensions, uh, they aren't going to feel this problem until all of a sudden there's nobody coming into their stores to buy food, or nobody going down to the CPA to get their taxes done, and no taxes, and no people to pay the rents, and they're all wherever they're living, stack them and pack them, I suppose. Government housing, I don't know, what government cheese, I suppose. You're going to, and tied into the system now. Now you have to go to the system in order just to survive. You're going to be tied into this identity of a digital identity, however it is, whether they give you the control of it or they keep it. It's all, it's all there. And so we see the problem of that right in this name, in the news as I'm looking through, how do I explain to people this problem of the attack that's just been done by this public lens bill that Trump did not even interfere with to even give us the time to have the public discussion. He could care less. He commits to committing genocide in Yemen, and he's going to commit genocide against you. Is is a is the model of some other kind kind of being. It's not not somebody with with peace and settlement in their mind. That's for sure. Law is not a part of this thought. But do we see right in the where I'm pointing out wealth? They want to bring on sustainable debt. That's in a debt system. They call it credit. You owe, you owe, to off the work you go, or not, depending on your social credit, I'm sure. Transition to cashless society could lead to financial exclusion and system vulnerabilities, system war, uh, study warns. And I, I pointed this out, not the fact of the going to the cashless society or the warning. They're pointing out that this financial exclusion exists, and it's going to exist. 
unless you until the the recipient the, the need the people who need the financial the cash transaction are so few you don't you don't care like you don't care about the public lands oh it's out there somewhere and it's a little bit you don't care about that this rolls down to the people who are going to be out of cash you say you don't care I got my I got my card who what do I care I got my digital phone. They're saying that the financial exclusion and system vulnerability exists right now. And I told you this a long time ago. This is not even new. What I wanted to focus you on that the lead, it could lead to financial exclusion is your doorway to make this stop. You need to put yourself in the place where you are those that are financially excluded. What have I been saying? You need to get to your silver and your gold money as a a common thing you use, not store, not hoard. You can have some of that. You need to get back into an alternative that requires that you continue. You need to have a word in your mouth about the fact that cash in the United States has to be accepted if you know where to go look in the law. And I apologize. I'd, I'm going to throw a number out, but it may not be right. 31 USC 5118. Uh, you're looking for what people used to call the HJR 192. It's in the law. It's also you're looking for the provision that says that there are these 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 fiats are good for public and private debt, but they also have to be accepted. You'll find that they cannot be not accepted. You need to have that in your vocabulary as we're moving now, even to have to look at cash, the fiat, to protect ourselves from this digital sustainable servitude. Financial exclusion to me was a was confetti and popping and and champagne and, and loud music and a dance around the room. They are telling you in this leading to financial exclusion, I'm telling you that's what you want to be. You want to fit the exclusion that they can't serve you, and you still have the need. You don't take there. You are not consent. This is how you're going to have to consent. It's not easy, but this is what you're all going to have to do. You're going to have to find, even with what I haven't even talked about today within this land bill coming down and how it's going to work out, how it works on through, there's places that you put yourself in that so that they cannot fulfill what they claim the bill can do, and you can show to that extent it doesn't meet the prohibition against the, uh, against the interference of vested, author vested rights. You have to know all your rights and to protect them. Those of you that think it's it's all about oh, hands off and oh I, I, I'm going to live in uh, non-violence and all that. No, they're coming like Genghis Khan and their horde to bust in your door, uh, drag you out and burn your place down because you are a carbon criminal. You carbon convict. You're already convicted. If you don't, I don't think you are, do. You under, do you really appreciate that? You've been convicted. The damages coming against you in legislation is already punitive. This land law that they just passed, under in stealth, bipartisan consensus, by the program problem, to destroy you is a punitive harm. You have to understand and see that when they put in the fact you can't use it means that your use of it was a crime. And if I'm talking way too fast here, you don't understand how complex this in, this uh, this thing that's come after us is in its attack. It's not hard to conceive once you see it. Like I could almost, I, I'm just, I always laugh because I talk too fast. I tell people I talk too fast. We had a little bit of conversation about that. I can't help it, folks. This stuff just comes out. It's not something you have to work hard to know about. This information is there to just be known. It, it pours out of me. I don't even think, I told you, I'm not thinking when I'm talking to you. Yes, I'm trying to keep track of stuff. Yes, I'm looking at my, my meat. I'm looking at all this stuff. I've got the broadcast going. I'm looking at this conversation. I'm trying to keep my tabs together. But when the information starts to come to you the way it does right now, it has been, I'm not thinking about it. It is what it is. It's as if I have this thing in my mind that maybe if you call it a picture, I'm just describing for you this picture. And it's an abstraction, which is an even odder thing. It's transparent to most people. It's even transparent to some extent to those of us that see it. This is how difficult this mercurial world is given over to an evil. People appreciate this. We've got a fallen nature given over to an evil. Our laws, the objective basis that we should keep, the republic we should keep, was one measure to hold it off. 
And, if, and it required our active participation, otherwise evil comes on us. And I just, I mean, my mind, as I go there, my mind just started going like Ukraine, what happened to the Soviet Union, the Ukrainians in, in the Soviet Union. Uh, now, now we're doing it again. The United States is doing it against Ukraine the other way, where we took out their bread basket, killed all the, all the prime industry knowledge, killed it off. Gave uh, to those that didn't want to die next the ability to work the land. They had no knowledge to work. And then when they started producing, they got produ worked to death because governments know where the value is. Is what flashed in my mind, and it's happening in slow motion to y'all in the United States of America with the bipartisan plunder that just happened with this land bill. And I don't, and I'm not uh, at all, you know, I always got the question, is it sensational? Folks, I'm, this is a dagger to your heart, and I'm serious as a heart attack, and your heart's about stopped here, and you're bleeding out, and, if, and you don't even know it. And I don't know what to do for you, because I've been, I've been trying to tell you to prepare, put the shields on. Don't even be there when they come. Be somewhere else and get them before they get you. No, you, none of you are doing that. So we have a little bit of a road, a, a row, a, a road to hoe, but they've taken away the work. See, they've taken away the land for us to hoe our beets. We don't have a place to put the crop in now. So I told you last week about the miners. Those miners, you those that are listening that are not listening, you think you, you want to jump off into another district, mining district and do nothing? And don't look at this multi-level attack. You, know, you want to go look at a court case that's trying to give get rights from a, a system that's been bent on stealing it and you didn't set your record up to expose that? When they give you all your, your rights back, where are you going to go mine when they just stole all the most valuable places and your grant comes underneath valuable mineral deposits? This isn't even a hard puzzle, folks. It isn't even a hard puzzle. And so the financial exclusion on this story, they're telling you the cash society is going to be wrought with problems. I'm asking you, don't stand on that railroad track looking the wrong way that the train coming on to go into the station on time. You're standing right there. This little statement, the financial exclusions, was a warning to the implementation of complete cashless society is your way out. You have to be there, though. You have to do that. You have to be different. You have to be out legal. You have to be outside of this thing that's coming. This is Again, it's legal because they've allowed it to come in, notwithstanding its wrongness. Remember, a de facto authority is still an authority. We talked a little bit about this with Obama. Even if everything was right about how he couldn't be, and, he wasn't unqu and even if he was unqualified, he was de facto, and that was good enough. Oh, but his orders are this, that. No, well, you gotta, you're not paying attention to the prison that you live in. You're not paying attention to how they set this place up. And then these people came along to exploit even that. And again, it's, I don't know how smart you all think you are, how intelligent you think you are. They're pulling a fast one anyway. You may not. You may claim that I'm my words, you're a little distinct away from my words, so you're not fitting into the class. And I'm, I'm not talking in generalities. I can only use a few words. I'm not going to go through the list to attack everybody, attack everybody, one of you, that you think you're hiding under your rock in a particular place, and, oh, I didn't mention that, so I'm okay. No, this is hitting everybody. Well, I don't care what rock you call the one you crawled under. They've just stolen the rock. Where are you going to hide now? And so it goes. They've attacked the primary industry. They're after your economy. They're bringing on a digital te technocratic future of finance, which is, would have been a, they're taking on the services as a government, again, as money, as law, as government, governance. No one noticed this. They still don't apparently notice it. So they're feeling the effects of it, and they complain, but no one really does more. And then I get this little story, which is kind of funny, because this is really where it starts to go. Again, it's an economic attack. They want more prisoners. They want more people to, to parasitically feed from. And I get these, and I see all the arguments about the uh, immigrants voting. I find this just a fascinating study on the ignorance of a people. House votes. The same people that voted to destroy you also votes for uh, in favor of illegal immigrant voting. 
you know, people go up and oh, the MAGAs and USA USA and all the so-called patriots. Oh, you can't have immigrants voting. You don't even you haven't researched it a bit to find out why do you vote at all? Well, you think it's electing some people to go destroy you? No, they got to get your consent on the money that they're going to steal from you. So what did I just say? Because you're a taxpayer, you get to vote. Otherwise, there's no purpose. They have to claim that they're giving you an ability to have a say. And if you're a taxpayer, you ought to. So if a, co a country that's being destroyed from the inside by the same plunderers that just stole all your wealth, if they want more victims, wouldn't they want to bring in this immigration vote? Because it's not about the immigration. It's about the business those immigrants do. It's about the status that they're made that's now addressed for, for the purpose of regulation. And it's the largesse of this government to give you a say over how that works from you. But none of you are participating in seeing or anything. I told you this is a franchise for voting. But you don't elect anybody. It's a franchise utility of the government as a certain status in a federal district, your voting rights. And if you look closely, you have state rights that are a little bit different, though they try to shove you through the federal citizen status. But what's the purpose of it all? It's all because you have you are a taxpayer. You're presumed to be one, but you admit it and consent to it once you fill out that registration form. And so when I look at it that way, I, to me it's completely clear that they would want to bring more people in to take on the status of a taxpayer, Give them the vote. There's no obstruction to it. That's the purpose for it anyway. You, you think they're doing it like NAFTA when they had a, a foreign country, a foreign corporation could sue states? You think you think there was a, no one? Everyone missed that one. It's the same thing. It's 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 the economy, stupid, and we're here to destroy it and we'll put you under servitude. Just be a good good proprietor. We don't care where you come from. You do business here. That's our jurisdiction. We're going to regulate you for the service, the tertiary service, notwithstanding we're just destroying all the primary. But you keep coming from other places. You become the resource that we're mining. We're going to mine it. And you will go start a business that's subject to our jurisdiction, and we'll give you a vote for how that will be managed. You don't elect anybody, but you'll, we'll, we'll give you a say, a mob rule say over how you get treated. House votes for in favor of illegal immigrants. So go ahead and, and yell and scream about the uh, illegal immigrant. It means that they're not illegal, folks. They've been legalized for a purpose. And that voting wasn't what you thought it was if you had that contention. Oh, it's the American thing. No, it, this is only commerce. This is, a, this is because you are a legal entity and doing commerce. You're in business. You're presumed that. You don't know how to stop it. You consent by not stopping it. I don't know what else to say. On and on and on. It's just self and reprovable. It should be self-evident by now. And that's to tell you if it's not, or you think you know different, it's been transparent to all y'all. No, again, if I'm gonna have, a, if I'm gonna be a Second Amendment guy and I'm gonna use my gun to change this government, if it's transparent to me, maybe I'm working up against a Terminator and I don't have the technology. It's invisible to me. Oh, I might get a glimpse every once in a while, but that thing's now owned in the forest, and I can't walk out there without getting taken down. And then the whole country becomes their forest. What good is your transparent? You can't see, you're a sniper. What good is it if you can't see your target, folks? And you can't see the target. I'm telling you all right up front. You can't see the target. You don't even know. You think this is all patriotic and all this, that, and the other, and it's not anything like what I've, I hear anybody look, talk, communicating about. I, I mean, I can't tell you how disappointed I am. I thought, you know, we were all coming to through school the same. We all had the same awareness. So apparently, I boy, have I been mistaken. Uh, this is where I get, well, what kind of a fool am I? And yet I have a, I see that there's a, a vast, in, there's a vast rightness in people that, that they just don't understand their own power. We didn't understand our power. We aren't taking responsibility to, to, to fix it, and we are all here to help each other, and we won't, which is speaking to another fallen nature. I guess as I think that, I, go, I don't tell you all this because I know so much. It's, I see this stuff as what we, we need to know in order to stop the nonsense against us. I really would rather be carefree and peaceful and settled and go about my world because I'm not a criminal. 
But I can't do that now. I haven't been able to do that for almost 20 years. Well, a whole lot longer now. <laughs> well, maybe into 35 now. But I'm talking about, you know, when you start, after you do this a while, you just want to stop doing that. I just want to go back and be peaceful. I just wanted, why can't we just get along? Well, we can't, folks. This is the, the reality. And so not addressing that, not perceiving the world as it is, having a worldview they program into you, you think you're independent of, but that's different than what the reality is or how you're going to be treated is not going to help us. So House votes in favor, in favor of illegal immigrant voting while they go around and they vote also to take away your wealth. You have to look at the importance of this to the House and why it would be important. And I'm just explaining to you more of what I continue to explain to you. This is an insurrection from the inside that hasn't been caught. It's in transparent to everybody. It's in a different place than anybody ever thought. And uh, anybody who wants to argue about Ill immigrant voting doesn't understand the, the, the first bit about what this is all about. And when I start hearing that, I really can't listen any further. It's noise. It's just noise. When I can start, when any take anybody who's interested and guide them, by instruction, or even if I have to for the moment, by walking them, holding their hand for a bit to show them how to go through. When I can show the objective basis, of the black and white, of how this works out, when I already know that, I could do that. All I see in here is noise to me. I don't need it. I don't need to hear the noise. And all I know is I shake my head and I'm saddened because that means that the noise is going to continue instead of being effective and, and functional. All your all your statements, your dreams, your opinions are, are really mean are zero value, zero value. And I'm looking at a bunch of people I really appreciate, and yet I can't I can't see how we're we're functional enough to be doing anything with each other uh, in support of each other because we're not. We don't even have that much respect in ourselves. Uh, I don't know. I just a thought. I'm just telling you some thoughts that come through my mind as I look at some of this. It's a hard, I mean, I have to go a long way to condemn anybody. My mind, my, myself, I want to make the best of everybody. But when over years and time goes on and we see what's going down and you want to continue to hold the, the same the, the same ineffectualness and it goes on year to year and you keep complaining how many year and year and you've never, uh, year, year after year it goes on and you've taken no adequate steps, especially when you're someone like myself and saying, listen, take these steps at least. If you've got to go there, take these steps, at least try that. And you don't. I don't know about us as far as working this through. And I I just am saddened for the future. You talk about future generations? I just told you they just took a... To these places in the land bill that they made scenic wild rivers and took out mining and interfered with certain things, notwithstanding the, they'll claim they helped fire. They didn't, folks. This is going to cause... The conservation of trees is future forest fires. Okay? If you're not going to step up to that and stop that, uh, your future is your future, your progeny, your sons and daughters. What a, a hell are they facing? I can't even imagine. I really can't even imagine. And how do they keep up with it? Talk about technocracy. They want more people to come in. Do you think there's a national security interest in this? That they're going to allow more immigrant voting? You think that's a violation? You think the wall is stopping anything? This is maybe why they don't care about the wall. No, they want to bring everybody not into the immigration fold. They want to bring them into the commerce fold. Why? Because they can extract this thing called taxes and they can give you the benefits of what they call voting. And it means nothing, but and everyone knows it means nothing, but you won't take any steps to expose. What did we say in the prior uh, thing talking about, talking about the cashless society? The financial exclusion? What about your political exclusion? How about your property exclusion? How about your life in these matters? How about your medical exclusion? How about if you start developing all those things, being out legal? And, and those are your subject to valid existing rights that this system is supposed to be reckon, reckoning with. And when they don't, you have a mass of you folks that know this that can do what it takes as a mass of people because one or two get run down. Like the district, mining district, kind of got ended around, folks. We t in a way, I, I kind of, kind of it's like maybe it's a, a bit of a hollow pride, folks. They came and attacked us right where we live, and they had to, but they had to do it stealthily because they can't do it by the law. And so, if I can take any pride, they had to do it that way. They can't do it out in the open. And what does that mean to me? We still got them if we could just rally up. 
And I can go through the list on and on and on and how the plunder, I told you, I opened up. It took me a few days to decide to go ahead and do it because I, you know, I got a consideration so to, tell the, to tell Trump he's a genius. He wants to, want to claim the status of genius. Where was the mineral estate trustee? Why? Well, he might be a genius, but where was the mineral estate trustee is my point. Because if that guy, that, that guy or gal was there in that office, if the office was there, this couldn't have happened. The fact that there was no office allows it to happen, which means it was a plan. Our problem is their plan, folks. It's all keep coming back around that I keep talking to you about. This is, again, not that hard that when I see so much disparagement and so it's all, everyone so knows so dang much and does so little about all they supposedly know, it's not looking good at all. Whatever my, whatever my thoughts are about that or my opinions about that are, it, it's irrelevant to the fact that we're going down in a bad way. This land bill just stabbed a, I just stabbed a heart, uh, in the heart the economic power of the state of Oregon. And these people that just did it are going for more. It wasn't enough. They want more. See, they make money on your body parts, too. So I just explained to you one of the avenues for this conservation, uh, derivative funding on conservation. And if you don't see that, you don't understand to make how, what record to make on that. But, I, I mean, on and on. I could talk more. There's so much to talk about on this. And I just don't know what to say on a broadcast uh, because, again, if you're interested, you're you're already working with it. Uh, if you're not, uh, what am I saying? And if you're not, and you're not to a sufficient number, which seems to be pretty much all of y'all, there is a – talk about dystopian future. It's going to be the worst things you, you've ever noticed. You, you, you think that the – the, the yellow vests in, in France, they're just the tip of the iceberg. It, they See, they're already responding, and you're not, and it's worse here. I just explained to you how it's worse here. They didn't even have these properties to claim or own or not be affected and be, live in peace and settlement, and they're already doing it. You have it, and they just stole it all, and you say nothing. Shows you how far and screwed up this whole thing is relative to the republic you should kept. And then the complaints we have because we didn't do it. We never agree. We never enjoyed the what the foundation looked like it so it, it gave to us, as I can see that it was through disposal land law to people. And so how do they get, go back to the point? Of how are they going to keep track of this, this democrat, this technocracy? This uh, we're back into uh, the computers and the keeping track of everybody, making your dossiers on everybody. They now explain there's going to be those in financial exclusion. I say there's going to be political exclusion, medical exclusion, landed exclu exclusion, property exclusions. You, you need to be the excluded ones, the ones that can't be made fit. And you got to have the reasons why they can't make you fit. And that brings you to the to the, the 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 protective savings clause in these laws that say subject to valid existing rights, you can state them is how you become your excluded self. When the amoeba comes to bring you into the fold, you become the Borg herd. Uh, how they did to keep to make keep track of the Borg herd? The mass surveillance program ended uh, by Trump uncovered exactly one case of terrorism. So. He must be a genius. He saw that we put a lot of money into a surveillance program looking for terrorists, and we only found one. Let's end the program. Well, if he's that smart and we see some intelligence out of the guy, why did he just attack you all in the Western lands, or the lands underneath the Public Lands Act? Why did he continue genocide over unless he intends to uh, hurt people? A mass uh, surveillance program launched by President Bush, defended by President Obama, and reportedly discontinued by President Trump, Reportedly, oh, interesting, was spectacularly unsuccessful at achieving its stated goal of making Americans safer. So I was happy to see this. Another, if I could say, do I have a feather in my cap? Well, I guess when I wear a cap, I guess I could be have a feather in it. What have I told you about this whole thing? It's, Amer it's the war of terror on you. Government is the terrorist. That's the definition of terror. In paraphrase, you have to bring in another definition for this, for the word of terror, but it's a it's a system of government that rules by fear, intimidation, and dread. That's a terrorism, and the one who does that, the government that does that, or its agents, are terrorists. They're the real ones. Uh, I told you that this was um, this was not going to find terrorist one, and any terrorists we so-called we found were going to be the ones that were were created and uh, is systemically f uh, fostered and encouraged. And we may have seen that. It looks like that's the same thing that was going on now down in New Zealand. They're going to have their own 
thing going on. What a fiasco in New Zealand where 49 people or 60, whatever now, are dead. Uh, and we, it's like a, the first shooter perspective. It's just like these video games coming to life. Uh, that was, it seems to me, to be all driven by that so-called deep state. It's that thing that runs this place. It's to keep the terror going, and you keep focusing on the terror instead of focusing on who's who's actually running the show and planning it. Here, they did a check. I told you a long time ago, watch the TSA. You're not going to see any terror, anything. They're not going to stop. That's been, I told you that years and years and years ago. Again, it's part of the plan of the 9-11. When you saw what was coming in, and when they finally went and done it, when they dropped those towers, they they, they split this trigger to have this come on. It was all a setup. That's when I went to to agreeing because it, it was not going to be a change for me. The reality was we were all terrorists. I'd be looking like one. I didn't want to have a mistake going on for people. And so we took on the uh, the view so I could then look like one of them, but I could speak different. Uh, it doesn't matter about what I look like. The point is that there's a there's a message to be sent. Uh, there was no terror to be found. It's because it's fabricated. In fact, this uh, didn't this uh, this uh, program apparently didn't even claim to uncover the ones the FBI created, the ones the CIA created, the ones that whatever the the local governments that in the police and military that you have locally created. Mass surveillance program was found one uh, case, and we don't even know what that was. It certainly didn't find any all these times because there is no terror. Well, there is. I should say rephrase that. There's one terrorist, and it's the government itself. I've talked to you about all this all the time. So when you come to terms with what I've said, and you realize for a fact that the government is the terrorist, and it's attacking you, it makes complete sense this bipartisan plunder was not stopped by Trump, even to test it and bring it in, out into the public disclosure that this was a war crime against us, that this attack was attacking national security because it, it attacked the foundational primary economy from which we would survive. When you see that, you have to understand, I said before, when it stopped making sense, you better start making sense of it. And I can't imagine that when they allow this attack on you, that you can consider that they're not attacking you. That you think that they're not, that they don't think this is a war against you. The thing I've been suggesting the whole time, and not just it's not a suggestion, I suppose. It is a it's a reflection of the fact if anybody would finally look at it. And so this technocratic de device, the digital construction of databases, they're using that for mass surveillance. The, as I told you, the, the, the intelligence is what they need to continue, commit the war and continue the war. Uh, you're just falling into the whole thing. Leaked documents show the government tracking of journalists. Uh, these are the people that if they start to talk, the, the government needs to know about them. Because there might be some rogue that they don't have control over. Right? So the, the, we now have leaked documents showing the government's tracking journalists. Why? Why would a government do that unless they're a threat? The journalists could be a threat. I'm not saying all of them are. The documents obtained by NBC7 investigates show, that US, investigates show uh, the U.S. government created a secret database of activists, journalists, and social media influencers tied with, uh, to the migrant caravan and, in some cases, placed alerts on their passports. The government is the terrorist. It's controlling you. You live in an occupied territory. You live in an occupied country. You're living in a prison. Everything is secret. But they do that because they're a war criminal. They're committing a war against you. Why is it would be un, you know it's not a, actually a surprise that they did the land bill they did. I want you to know that they just stabbed you all in the heart and they continue to do it. They want to kill you. They want to make life. Those of you that crawled away from the attack, they're going to get you later. And they're going to do it by looking. You want to become an activist, a journalist, and a social media influencer. This is the secret report that leaked out. There's others. I'm absolutely sure that you want to keep your head in the sand over this kind of thing and uh, and whatever. I don't even know what it is you all do. I don't really have the adjectives anymore to describe all this stuff. It's just ineffective and dysfunctional, and it's not going to solve the problem. Oh, yeah, you live every day and you go down the road, but uh, that could stop at any time. If they're making these databases, we hear that it's going on. Are you going to be data exclusionist? Are you going to a financial exclusion? Are you going to extend to your data profile, your dossier? You're going to start getting into the fact that you're a war criminal, you carbon convict.
I don't, I don't know if people appreciate this. You, you folks are carbon convicts. It sounds stupid. This is the worst thing you could be in the world right now, and you all are. And this is the re part of the reason. This is just another dimension of what I've been telling you is going on in the militarization of, of our world for many, 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 many decades. How many manys are lots? How many lots? Bunches. And you think that maybe it's just activists and journalists, and we were talking about China and the social media and the social media influencers and your social credit, and then this little thing pops up. You don't think these governments are interrelating, and they're using you as human resources because they're getting rid of all the actual resources that you need to get rid of your primary uh, industries in order to use you as the human resource. China database lists breed ready status of 1.8 million women if you think the government thinks women need to be protected. You're just a breeding unit, just like I said Roe versus Wade said you was. In China, the database lists breed ready as a status. Well, they're writing this off as some maybe English translation. They should have been maybe more like a breeding age, I suppose. No, breed ready. Women are breed ready in China. If you don't think your the, the the government is uh, doing animal husbandry, women are breeding systems. I told you about this before. Roe versus Wade predicted that. If you just read that, then this little story popped up, which I thought was fascinating as well, to bring you into why they can treat you like this. This is all a fiction that's set up that you uh, continue to continue to agree to. There's a little statement in the Kim, uh, brother of Kim Jong-un's murderers. The woman was released. woman accused of assassinating Kim Jong-un, uh, brother, was freed. A little statement down here. She was an Indonesian, and uh, they made a statement. The country said this. The prosecutor said the discharge is not amounting to an acquittal. acquittal. I mean, Sita can be recharged, but there is no such plans now. Indonesian Ambassador Rusti Kirani expressed gratitude for the decision, stating, We feel the court is fair. She's our daughter. Indo every Indonesian is our children. If you didn't understand what parent patria is and the pater patria is and how the Roman law is upon this world and how it's being affected against you and how it came through England and expanded in the United States, the father of the country has the sovereignty and you don't. And they're going through the kids and the women to do this. There's a whole other study about what they're doing to us wrapped up inside how they come in and do this plunder against us that you're crickets against. I am stunned. It's all there for us to see. It's all there for us to understand. And we have no response for it. Was our first failure and our really our own failure if the Republic was to be kept. And we had in any chance that what the founders did to give people private property and private rights and production to be part of the primary industries that gave us wealth and not be subject to uh, decentralized, centralized controls under a fiat system that's as government and not real government. You. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said uh, gives you more insight. Hopefully you get into helping uh, really defend ourselves. It's not going to take a bullet. This is not going to stop with a bullet. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Appreciate all that. Know what you do and being able to come here each and every week to pull this off and get a record archive. Hopefully people will listen to it and, and pass it out there, folks. All you all that are uh, doing that, I appreciate that. And uh, syndication, uh, ucy.tv, um, thank you again for holding us out every uh, Sunday. The ghost in the machine over there at UCY and anybody else is rebroadcasting this or reproducing it. The content, thank you very much. Uh, and all of you all that like and all that, help help the cause, folks. I hear, I hear liking is supposed to be important in the social media circuit. We've got to counter this other nonsense. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
Well, that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, he just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>